Hey finger drummers, my name is Dragon and this is the secret to realistic finger drumming. If you want to get more free finger drumming lessons like this, be sure to head on over to dragonfingerdrums.com. There's a link in the video description down below. So there's one key to realistic finger drumming that most finger drummers don't know about or consider. And that is to set up your pads like an acoustic drum kit. Now, why is this so important? Well, if you watch acoustic drummers playing the drum kit, they have their drums set up in a way as to keep their limbs isolated from each other. So one limb can play uh, the back beat, for example, and the other limb can play accent notes. They also have two feet to work with, but as finger drummers, we only have our 10 fingers. So a lot of finger drummers, when they go to set up their pads, they aren't really thinking about the logic behind it. They usually like to approach it, they just put the, the sounds on the pads in the order that they think of, right? Starting with the kick drum, then the snare drum, then the hi-hat. Now, when you go to set up your pads, you actually want to visualize a drum kit because we're talking about professional level finger drumming, playing the pads like a percussion instrument rather than just a sampler. If we think about visualizing an acoustic drum kit, it's all about isolation, mapping your individual fingers to the sounds and the drums that you want to be able to play in tandem with each other. For example, the hi-hat plays along with the kick and the snare, having the toms in the right place, etc. Now, why don't finger drummers think this way? Well, especially a lot of finger drumming instructors who are out there who are teaching lessons, a lot of them didn't come from an acoustic drumming background. They came from a background in electronic music production or hip hop or something like that. So no offense to them, but when they approach the pads, they're not thinking like a drummer, they're not thinking like a musician, they're just approaching it almost at random. So I have a background in acoustic drumming. I've been playing acoustic drums for over 13 years now, and I've been finger drumming for over eight years. So I've arrived at what I think is the ultimate finger drumming setup for high level, realistic finger drumming. So I'll give you a little demo of what it sounds like and what's actually capable with your skill level when you're playing with a finger drumming setup like this. As you can hear, this particular pad setup allows for a lot of versatility. Just like an acoustic drummer, we can isolate our fingers from each other and play each drum part separately, but in unison. So what is the key to this setup? The essential principle or premise of this finger drumming pad setup is your dominant versus your non-dominant hand. That's the key, and it's the same in acoustic drumming. So what we want to do when we're talking about dominant versus non-dominant hand is understand which hand is going to play which drums and then keeping them separated and assigning each of those drums to those hands always. As an example, a lot of finger drummers like to play with one hand doing the kick, the snare, and the hi-hat. You know, I have those three pads next to each other, but I don't play this way. A lot of finger drummers like to play this way because they think it's more ergonomic but actually it's very clumsy and you don't have the capacity to play beats as complicated as you would want to. So this is what they normally try to play like. But if you want them to play something like this, they can't do that obviously with just three fingers. You need to have your hands separated from each other, isolated from each other in order to play a rhythm like that. So let's start with the dominant hand. The role of the dominant hand in acoustic drumming is generally to play the backbeat. This is usually either on the hi-hat or on the ride cymbal. So our dominant hand, it doesn't matter if you're left or right-handed, it's just whichever hand is your dominant hand is going to be taking the role of playing the backbeat, again, on the hi-hat or ride. So it's playing a steady groove, usually, to keep the, the beat in rhythm, in time. And while the dominant hand is playing the backbeat, the non-dominant hand will be playing the accent notes. Now, again, if you think of an acoustic drummer, their backbeat, their dominant hand is playing a backbeat on the hi-hat, for example, and then their non-dominant hand is on the snare drum playing those accent notes. Or if they're over here on the ride, same thing. 
Now, both hands will come together to do rolls and fills, or if there's a, a crash hit or something like that. There are plenty of exceptions when the, the, the hands will actually work together. But when we're talking about creating a rhythm with different drums, different elements like a hi-hat and a snare, the dominant and non-dominant hand remain isolated from each other. And this is crucial to apply to finger drumming. Now, there's one other element that normally applies to acoustic drumming that we can't apply to finger drumming. And that is the feet, the kick drum. So obviously we can't control anything with our feet in finger drumming. We have to use fingers. So when it comes to where that kick drum should be placed, what hand should be responsible for playing that kick drum, in my practice and experimentation with finger drumming, I've found that the kick drum works best on the non-dominant hand along with the snare drum, the hand that's playing those accents. Because if you listen to a lot of acoustic drumming, the kick drum and the snare drum usually play off of each other. They don't usually hit at the same time. They're not usually competing for the same notes. So I'm gonna play you an example and you'll watch my dominant hand is playing a steady backbeat, right? It's, it's doing one thing and then playing the kick and the snare with both, with the, the non-dominant hand, works very well because they're, they're not competing with each other. So listen to what that sounds like. Right, so that's a very typical sounding drum beat, but as you'll notice, the non-dominant hand is able to play all the accent notes, whether they're on the kick or the snare. So that's pretty much the core essential secret to playing realistic finger drumming, to sound actually like an acoustic drummer, like a percussionist. There's a lot more detail and depth that I could go into in terms of exactly where to place each drum sound on each pad and which fingers to use for which sound, but this core principle of using dominant versus non-dominant hand and keeping them isolated for the backbeat versus the accent notes, this is the key principle. If you want to learn more of these in-depth concepts and uh, view my exact pad setup template and the whole logic behind my setup, um, all sorts of other advanced topics, go to dragonfingerdrums.com. We have tons of finger drumming lessons on there for you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.